Let's take a look at question 11 in topic set 10 in chem 11. This is a question about converting a substance from different phases, right? Like a phase diagram related, as well as energy needed to convert a substance from one phase to another, say from solid to liquid or from solid to liquid to gas, etc. And the question here is how much energy is needed to convert water from a certain temperature, in this case, 22 degrees, all the way to negative five degrees for ice. So you want to take water at negative at 22 degrees Celsius to ice at negative 5 degrees Celsius. The way you're going to do this is by using the heat that you got to vaporize a compound CF2Cl2, which is refrigerant or something that you probably know more as freon, right? Something that you use in your refrigerator. So the idea here is that your water is going to cool down. So this is your water, let's say, and it's going to become ice, blocks of ice. When this happens, it's it's going to release energy or heat. That heat that's being released is used to convert the CF2Cl2 from its liquid form to the gas form. So this is CF2Cl2 liquid. This is CF2Cl2 gas. So this is vaporization. So that process requires heat. This process releases heat. And so they're coupled to each other. And if you're vaporizing your freon, then you're going to release, you're going to release that heat and that heat is coming from the cooling of water to ice. So the question here is how much freon is needed or how much CF2Cl2 is needed in terms of mass that must be vaporized if you want to convert your water. Well, the water is given as 18 ice cubes. That's the amount of water you're going to convert from liquid water. And each of the ice cube has a mass of 30 grams. Okay, so you can calculate the total mass here. But let's think about how to solve the problem real quickly. So as we said, the heat that's needed to evaporate the CF2Cl2, so converted from liquid to gas, is going to be equal to the heat that's needed to convert water from 22 degrees to negative 5 degrees. This is liquid and this is ice, so it's solid. So what we need to do in order to figure out how much mass of CF2Cl2 we need is to first figure out how much this heat quantity is, this Q. And so let's take a look at this process right here. What is the amount of of heat needed to convert water from 22 degrees to negative 5. We can look at our heating curve, cooling curve types description of this process. So we start with a temperature of 22 degrees and we want to bring it down to negative 5. So at 22 degrees, water is a liquid and it's going to keep dropping, right? In order for you to convert that water to ice, you have to bring it down all the way to 0 degrees. So let's say this is 0 degrees. Celsius. Okay, this is your temperature axis. So you need to bring this down to zero. And then afterwards, there is a freezing process that occurs. So freezing means that the liquid is getting converted to solid, but then the temperature stays the same. And then you have another conversion to negative five. So this is the process that we need to look at. There's three stages. Stage one is converting the liquid from 22 to zero. Stage two is the freezing. And then stage three is converting converting the ice from zero to minus five Celsius. So let's see how much energy each of those processes would release. To calculate the amount of energy release when the water cools down from 22 to zero degrees, we can use our MC delta T equation, where the M in this case is 18 cubes of ice with each cube weighing 30 grams. So that's our mass. Then we need specific heat of liquid water and that value is 4.18. And then we need our temperature change, which is just going to be 22 degrees Celsius, 22 minus zero. Calculating this number gives me 49,658.4 joules. So that's the first step. The second step is we need the heat that's released when the water freezes to ice. To do that, I just need the quantity of ice I have, which is 18 times 30 grams, and then multiply by the heat of fusion or the enthalpy of fusion, 6.02 kilojoules per mole. Since it's given as units of mole, I'm going to have to convert my mass to moles, which just means dividing by the molar mass of water and then multiplying this by the heat of fusion. And that would give me energy of 180, 600 joules. So that's the second leg. And then the third process is taking the water from zero to negative five degrees Celsius. And we would use MC delta T again, except now we would use the specific heat of ice, not liquid water. And the specific heat of ice is 2.03. And then 
the temperature difference is 5 degrees Celsius. Calculating this gives us 5481 joules. Adding all of those together, we have the total release by water as it cools down, and that total is going to be 235, 739.4 joules. So once we have that, we can say that that should be the same amount of heat that's going to be needed to convert my Freon or my CF2Cl2 from liquid to gas. The question is how much Freon am I going to need? So to get the mass of the CF2Cl2, all I need to do is take the energy I need, which is this number, and then divide by the amount of energy needed to evaporate a gram of CF2Cl2, which we were told is 158 joules. And so my answer at the end would be 1492 grams, or we convert this to kilogram, will be 1.492 kilograms of CF2CL2.